Come nasce il progetto Music for Freedom? Uh, nel 2019 io e Roberta iniziamo la nostra avventura con Orchestra Olimpia e um, decidiamo semplicemente di guardarci intorno e capire quali altre realtà come la nostra esistessero, non solo in Italia ma anche nel mondo. E così come orchestre femminili veramente ne abbiamo trovate pochissime, in particolare orchestre femminili sinfoniche. Eh, sono riuscita a trovare il, le notizie su Zora che era questo ensemble sinfonico nel Medio Oriente, ebbene sì, un'orchestra femminile a Kabul. Ho parlato con Roberta di questa incredibile realtà, che era veramente un sogno ad occhi aperti. Così da lì è iniziata la voglia di eh, contattarli, la voglia di incontrarli e la nostra avventura ha avuto inizio in quel momento. Abbiamo visto il sito dell'Orchestra Zora, che è un sito meraviglioso che è ancora attivo, zoramusic.org, e... E io come al solito, che sono diciamo, la scappestrata del duo, come dice Francesca, sono la caffettiera e lei cerca un attimo di, come dire, di ristabilire sempre un contatto con la realtà, ho detto, senti, dobbiamo incontrare questo gruppo di ragazze. E mandiamo un'email eh, con la vana speranza che ci rispondessero, invece il dottor Ahmed Sarmast eh, ha risposto praticamente subito accogliendo il nostro invito, perché noi siamo un'orchestra femminile, e quello che, significa, eh, che significava e che significa tuttora un'orchestra come Zora in un mondo come quello afghano eh sì. è un messaggio talmente forte, talmente importante per l'evoluzione della loro società, per il cambiamento della loro società che ha risposto subito, ha accolto a braccia aperte la possibilità di incontrarci. My name is Ahmed Salmast, I'm the founder and director of the Afghanistan National Institute of Music. Currently I live in Portugal with the rest of the and in community who've been relocated to Portugal after the return of the Taliban. Uh, Afghanistan National List of Music has been established in 2010 with a number of objectives. Uh, and it was in a time when the Taliban were defeated in Afghanistan and Afghanistan was moving towards establishing a civil society and a democratic uh, community. Uh, that was the time that I returned back from Australia to Afghanistan to establish the school. But the school very soon established a number of ensemble and orchestras, and one of the orchestras was the Afghan Youth Orchestra, the very first orchestra that we established. And this is the first, uh, that this is the orchestra that also from 2010 until 2021, until the Taliban came, we've been actively alongside the Zora Orchestra has been representing the positive changes that happened in Afghanistan in post-Taliban. But unfortunately, when the Taliban returned to Kabul, we lost everything. We lost access to our community. We lost access to the school. We lost access to our resources, our facilities. But most importantly, the people of Afghanistan lost their rights or their music rights. Music was once again banned in Afghanistan and we've been forced to leave the country. It was not an easy, uh, an easy task. It took us some good four months to organize everything, to relocate 273 people out of Afghanistan. But finally, we've been lucky to leave Afghanistan and to have another opportunity and to create another opportunity for our students to hope, dream and chase their dreams. Right now we are located in Portugal. We established, we established different ensemble and orchestras and our program in partnership with the Braga Conservatory. And we are back to the global stage and it's a privilege and honor to be now in Italy, in the beautiful city of Pesaro and in a beautiful partnership and collaboration with the Olympia Orchestra. È da cinque anni che proviamo a incontrare eh, l'orchestra Zora e Ahmad Sarmast, ma prima la pandemia, poi l'arrivo dei talebani nel 2021, poi lo scoppio della guerra in Ucraina, eh, tutte queste vicissitudini hanno interrotto le nostre trattative e il nostro incontro. Finalmente, adesso, dopo cinque anni, avviene veramente. Non incontriamo però più l'orchestra Zora, ma incontriamo la Afghan Youth Orchestra. 
Tornando a parlare nuovamente con i nostri interlocutori, con i quali comunque abbiamo scambiato nel tempo momenti di incontro e di riflessione sulla condizione della donna in Afghanistan e la condizione della società e della musica, eh, è uscita fuori l'urgenza comunicativa, un'urgenza comunicativa di tipo diverso. Sì, rimane il problema femminile, ma adesso per quanto riguarda la musica il problema è un problema che accomuna tutti i cittadini. La musica è bandita dalla società, è bandita dalle abitazioni private, ne è bandito ogni uso e consumo e produzione. Per cui il messaggio che loro vogliono lanciare, che noi siamo orgogliosi di ospitare, è quello di una gioventù afghana che sogna un futuro diverso, un futuro di parità dove le donne vivono senza segregazione, dove il diritto allo studio è un diritto per tutti e i diritti umani sono diritti per tutti, indistintamente uomini e donne insieme. Uh, music was always an integral part of the Afghan society. It was used widely in the community and music played a significant role in reunification of Afghanistan. And uh, we strongly believe that music is not just entertainment. Music is a powerful force for bringing people close to each other, for unifying people, for building bridges between civilizations and cultures, building bridges between people, and uh, that's why we're doing And today, in this wonderful collaboration with the Olympia Orchestra, we show, and it's, we show in practice that music does not recognize boundaries. Music is a universal language understood all over the world, and through music we can communicate to wider communities, and today, through music, we'll be talking to the uh, audiences here in Italy, through music we will be bringing to the attention of the Italian community the plights of the Afghan people. Through music we will be letting the people know here and around the world what's happening today in Afghanistan. And it's through music that we will be reunifying and calling on the Afghan people to resist against the Taliban, to protest against the Taliban, and to make sure that they're getting their rights back. Through music we, we can pass the messages of freedom as today's concert is called music for freedom so we're playing today here for freedom of the afghan people we're playing here today for human rights reestablishment of human rights in afghanistan and today we're speaking here for the music rights of the afghan people and by the end of the day music rights human rights women's rights they're part of the freedom of every individual member of any community and music would enable us to do this today here My name is Alicina, I'm 16 years old and I play uh, violin and uh, I play violin for uh, six years. Music means for me 
uh, life. Like I, when I started music, I was too young. So uh, without music, I cannot continue my life. And uh, it's kind of a very huge love for me. My name is Shigufa. I'm from Jalalabad, Afghanistan, and I play percussion. I'm 19 years old. I've been playing music almost for eight years, but I'm learning conducting for three years, so it's short time. <laughs> music means a lot to me. As you guys all know that music has a lot of power. And what I love about music, it's ability to change my mood instantly. And I have learned many things from music hope, love, and a special never give up. Uh, my life in uh, Portugal going very well. And uh, yes, of course, uh, uh, studying and learning music uh, is a good thing to do. And I enjoy how uh, I learn violin in Portugal and how I continue to music, uh, which I cannot do it in Kabul. I'm a musician and I need to go all around the world and play all around the world. So everywhere is my home if it is music, if we can play music. Uh, it is a fantastic experience for me. And uh, to visit, the Rus uh, especially the Rossini city, and to play in a Rossini concert hall and theater, and uh, to uh, visit Conservatory of Rossini, it's amazing. Questo concerto si chiama Musica per la Libertà, non a caso. Eh, il senso di questa serata è molto, molto ampio. Innanzitutto questi ragazzi oggi sono qui liberi di poter suonare, quindi il significato per loro è veramente tanto grande. Ma non è soltanto per loro, è anche per la musica che suonano, perché in questo momento il luogo da cui loro provengono è un luogo muto. Quella musica non può più essere ascoltata, quindi è veramente molto importante che la musica tradizionale afghana risuoni nei luoghi della cultura e della musica, anche fuori dall'Afghanistan. Ultimo, ma non meno importante, anche il fatto che questa sera qui saranno presenti moltissime istituzioni e la visibilità di questo concerto sarà molto alta. Noi siamo molto contenti perché questo significherà che il messaggio che questi ragazzi veicolano e l'importanza della diffusione della musica afghana e del tema della, di quello che sta succedendo in Afghanistan arrivi veramente a più persone possibile. First of all, they are very lucky to be out of Afghanistan. When I'm talking to be lucky to be out of Afghanistan, it's not, I don't mean that Afghanistan is a bad place or they've been dreaming to leave Afghanistan. They're lucky not to live under the heels of the Taliban. They're lucky to be uh, out, out of Afghanistan, live in freedom and to continue what they've been chasing and hoping to do in the future. They are, they are very lucky in these terms, but also they've got a huge responsibility while they are in Portugal, in Europe, and living in freedom. The huge responsibility is to safeguard the Afghan musical cultures. 
They've got a huge responsibility to be the voice of millions of voiceless, uh, voiceless people of Afghanistan who've been forced into silence. And they've got a huge responsibility to be the voice of Afghan women. So that's important. But you know, in the other end, they are, they are back to school. They continue their music education. They're back involved in music making. All ensemble and orchestras of Afghanistan has been reestablished. And now they've got an opportunity to be at the global stage once again. And today, being in this beautiful stage in this historical place, it's a wonderful opportunity that no many Afghan musician has got this opportunity and this privilege. I'm very happy being in Portugal. Now I have opportunity, we all have opportunity. We go to school and we, and I mean, we have a lot of opportunity. At least we can play music, you know, we can go to school. I'm very happy and we have really good opportunity. And of course, I feel really um, comfortable being in Europe, in Italy or in Portugal. So I feel good. I'm a big fan of Rossini. And today was really a great day for me to visit his uh, conservatory and his home. He's one of my favorite composer, you know, because he did many things for the history of music, like he, especially in uh, singing, like he wrote 39 opera. My favorite one is the Barber of Seville, and of course the William Till. And the other hand, like to, tonight we have concert and for me, it's, um, I'm glad that we show Afghan music for the world. And of course, we play also European music. Well, the things are happening in Afghanistan. Uh, there's a lot to say about women, but you know, even like the girls and the boys, they are not allowed to go to public school. Like they even cannot hear the sound of music. And the reason why the Taliban didn't allow music because music has a lot of power and they get scared of music. And you know, even like the girls, well, it's, it's too sad to talk about those things. Uh, even like their own family didn't support them. They are not allowed to go to school, to go to universities. Um, so the things are happening for the women in Afghanistan. I think it is something that's wrong. And it doesn't only concern only Afghans. This is something that concerns the whole world. One one person is suffering, is a whole world is suffering. You know, being a conductor, especially in Afghanistan, is too hard. That this is something that I love. So, because I choose to be a conductor, and I just love, you know, being. Um, Having I ask contact with the people and working with them, I love really two things. I love music and I love people. And well, it's too hard in Afghanistan, but I have chance that here to continue my music. I just want to finish my school with music and just working on my conducting stuff and just those things. In the past, when we've been traveling to various parts of the world, We've been celebrating the return of music to Afghanistan after the first time when the Taliban were defeated. But now, when we're receiving an opportunity to perform, to perform in partnership with other orchestras and ensembles, it means a lot to us. It means that we are able to break the silence imposed on the Afghan people. It's an opportunity to to raise the voices of the Afghan people. It's an opportunity to do advocacy for music rights in Afghanistan, and it's an opportunity to raise awareness about what's happening in Afghanistan in the field of music, in the field of human rights, and most importantly, what's happening with the women in Afghanistan today, where is practically agenda apartheid is taking place.